Hello there, and welcome to the second video from part two in Appendix C from Stevens' Matrices, Vectors, and 3D Math, a Game Programming Approach with MATLAB. Again, from the textbook repository, um, you're going to open up the zip folder Appendix C, a quick guide to MATLAB, and you're going to grab a um, file out of there. And we'll get to that in just one second. Um, but in this particular video, we're going to see how to create a function. In the last video, we showed how to create a function using a function file. Very um, versatile. You can do a lot with that, but you have to create another um, file, a function file. And um, it's, it's a little overkill if all you need is a, is a quick, easy function. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to create a quick, easy function known as an anonymous function. All right? Very good, slightly less versatile than the function files, but easier. And it's, and it's worth pointing out the usage. It's got a little bit of weird usage, but um, you give it a name equals, and this at symbol means in, this here is an anonymous function. The input variables are in parentheses, and then the output variables are in the square brackets. There's another type of in function called an inline function. They're not very good, and they will not be supported in the future, so I'm not even going to discuss them. So we're going to pull up an anonymous file from the program repository. That file is anonymousfunction.m. Right? And so this is not a function file. This is actually just a program. It's just a script. And, and what ha it has some functions, some anonymous functions in the, um, in the actual program. So let's just run it to see what it does. Run. Right? Uh, so Clearly, clearly created a graph, but there's some other stuff. So I'm going to nest this uh, graph down there. So it did some other things. Right? So uh, let's see what it did. We, we, we're going to come over here. Uh, we create, before we even do the, the program, we define the functions. So we have one function called little f. It takes x as an argument, as an input, and it returns x squared. Now if x happens to be a vector, then we want to make sure that we square the terms in that vector uh, one at a time. So that's where that dot squared. In case it's a vector, you don't want it multiplying it by itself. You want it to just square every single term in the vector. So hence the dot squared. So basically, f is just x squared. Um, and then there's another function called area. And it takes in length and width. So it takes in two arguments. And it returns a single argument, length times width, or area. Then we have another function called capital F. It takes in two variables, r and theta. That's the distance from the origin and the angle made with the positive x-axis. And it returns the x value and the y value associated with that particular uh, point. All right, so it's basically you give the um, you give the point in polar coordinates, r and theta, and it returns the coordinates in the Cartesian coordinate system, right, x and y. OK, so I have three functions, and now I'm going to use the three functions, right? The first one will be used to plot the parabola x squared. So I'm going to let x go from negative 2 to 2. There'll be 100 of them. So that's this negative 2 to 2 down here in the graph. Um, and so I'm going to just going to plot. And here, I'm actually calling that function within the plot command. So there's little f. I've defined that. I'm doing it right here. So I'm plotting x and f of x. And it does it. Right? Simple. Um, and then the next function actually has two inputs, a length and a width. So I'll define L as 2.6, W is 7.1. And area, I'll call capital A, is called with the area function, which I defined up here. I insert L times W. And then I'm going to print out the results from that function. Right, so if I have length equals, and this here says expect a float with two decimals, and that first float will be L, right? So that's going to be the 2.6. So it's it's actually not expecting a two decimal float. I'm sorry, it's it's going to print out as a string this number associated with the variable L to two decimals, and then width equals. Now it's expecting another number, and it will print it out to two decimals. And that variable is w. So it'll be 7.1 displayed with two decimals. All right, and so that's this first line right there. Length equals 2.60, width equals 7.10. That's 
done with this first line here, f print f. And then the next line just prints um, the results of our function evaluation and we get our area as calculated by the area function. Right, and then the next function is going to take in r, the radius of um, our polar coordinate or the distance to the origin, and our angle in radians from the x-axis, and it's going to send those into the function capital F to find up here. Notice capital F is going to return a vector, right, or an ordered pair, or two values within the square brackets, right? And I'm going to call that variable that it returns, which will actually be an array, I'll call it xy, right, because it's the first term in there is going to be the x value, and the second term is going to be the, the y value. And again, I do some fancy displaying. I'm going to display the r value, display theta out to the command window, and I'm going to print the value in the xy coordinates, right? And by the way, you get that from, because if you, if, if you look at this, so I ran this, I have that variable that I called xy. That was determined right here, right? So when it returned the the um, argument from the function capital F, it was an array. Negative, well that's actually just 0 and negative 1. Right? And so the x value is just x, y, 1. Right? A little rounding error, as you can see. And this other value is the y value is x, y, 2. Right? So you can return as many variables as you like. You just have to access them one at a time if you want to use them one at a time, like we did here. Right? So it works like a charm. It um, it uh, it can be used. The the nice thing about these anonymous functions, they're quick and easy. They don't take up much space. You don't have to create another file. And um, but the thing is, you can't do really long, sophisticated um, procedures within any one of these. You have to fit it in these square brackets, right? Um, whereas with a function file, you can do all sorts of um, manipulations. Once you once you call it, so those are anonymous functions. Be, the, the, between the function files and the anonymous functions, you should be more than um, covered as far as writing your own functions are, is concerned. All right, so I will see you at the next video from uh, Appendix C three, which is graphing.